How's it going everybody, Mr. D here. In this video, we are going to be talking about polynomials, their factors, and how that translates onto a graph. So we're gonna continue talking about uh, polynomials and their zeros. So, a few little recaps. Uh, we've already discussed this first one before. Uh, if you know a zero or an x-intercept of a function, any sort of polynomial, and quadratics fall into that category as well, if you have an x-intercept or a root or a zero that you know, then you can claim that x minus whatever that number is is going to be a factor that somehow shows up in your factored form polynomial. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with maybe a graph or a list of x-intercepts or roots, and from there we are going to figure out what polynomial function could have created those. Uh, step two says to expand. Essentially, we're going to distribute things out. Uh, when we are distributing, remember that we can only multiply two pieces at a time. So there will be a scenario in which, you know, we've got three different factors or maybe four that we're trying to distribute at any given time. So in those cases, you're going to first, fit, you know, pick two factors, distribute those out, and then bring the third one into play from there. So I'll show you what I mean here. We want to find a cubic polynomial in standard form with the given zeros. So each one of these zeros corresponds to a factor for this polynomial when written in factored form. If I have a root or an x-intercept at negative 2, that means x plus 2 would have been a factor. x minus 2 also has to be a factor to create a root or an x-intercept at 2, and x minus 3. So now I've got my three factors. I'm noticing x shows up three times, and we have a cubic. So things are starting to make sense, right? I should see x to the third power. Uh, what I need to do now is distribute this thing out so that it's in the format of x cubed, and then x squared, then x, and then a constant number. So I need to pick two of these factors. So I'll choose the first two here. Uh, I'm noticing right out the gate, I've got a difference of squares pattern that's going to show up because we have conjugate pairs. So this becomes x squared minus 4 if I just distributed those guys out. Uh, this x minus 3 just kind of comes down for the ride. So now I'm going to focus on multiplying these two together. Again, when I multiply, I can only multiply two things at a time. So if you have three or more factors that need to get multiplied out, pick any two and distribute that out. I could have, if I wanted to, multiplied these guys out first and then worried about the x plus 2 later. I'd still get the same result. So now let's distribute. Essentially, we are going to be foiling, right? Everyone's favorite four-letter F word. We're going to have x to the third power minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 12 after all is said and done. And there, my friends, is our cubic function. How neat. Now, I should make note that for all we know, there could have been some coefficient or number in front of this whole thing. That's not going to change what my roots or my factors are. So if there was a factor or leading coefficient in front of this whole thing, that does not change the behavior at all. If I wanted to, I could multiply all of these numbers by, in this case, I made up the number 7, and nothing would change. The factors are still the same. All right, onward we go. Let's find a cubic polynomial in standard form with the zeros given to us. Well, as soon as they give me zeros, I can create factors. I'll have x minus zero. Well, I'm just going to call that x. Then I'm going to have x plus three and x minus seven. So I've taken these x-intercepts, these roots, these solutions, and from those, I've created factors. Now, we need to expand. I'm going to go ahead and multiply these two guys out. So I know it's going to start off with an x squared. It's going to end with a minus 21. My middle term would be a negative 7x and a positive 3x, so negative 4x in the middle after I, quote unquote, foiled all this stuff out. So x squared minus 4x minus 21. And we have the x chilling out front still. Well, now I'll just distribute that x that was hanging out front into the parentheses. 
and I'll get x to the third minus 4x squared minus 21x. And that's it. Not two shabs. Not two shabs. All right, next one. We want to find a quartic. Quartic means x to the fourth, so I should see four x-intercepts, or up to four x-intercepts. And as I look down here, one, two, three, four, sure enough, I do. I've got four solutions. So first thing I want to do is write out my factors. Now, if there's an x-intercept at zero, that factor is just a plain old x. And I'm seeing this thing show up two times, so it's going to have an exponent of two. Okay, so I've got both of these zeros here are represented with that x squared, which is really like an x times x. Once we have this, we're going to start expanding this out. Remember, I can only multiply two things at a given time. So let me throw the in-between step for those who might be curious. Um, I'm going to go ahead and multiply these two guys out. That would be x squared plus 3x minus 4. Then we had the x squared that was chilling out front. To get our result here, x to the fourth plus 3x to the third minus 4x squared. So writing these equations isn't necessarily difficult. It's just translating x-intercepts relate to factors. And once you know factors, you can get the equation. All right. Let's do one more and call it a day. So here we have four factors. You know, we have four factors, which or sorry, four x-intercepts, which means we're going to have four factors. And I'm noticing here we, we've got conjugate pairs showing up. So that indicates a difference of squares pattern. Here's another set of conjugate pairs, so another difference of squares pattern. So I'm going to go through and just kind of multiply each one of those little conjugate pair sets together first. And once I have this, I can, everyone's favorite four-letter F word, foil this thing out or distribute. So once I have this here, I'll do x squared times x squared, x squared times negative 9. Negative 4 times x squared, negative 4 times negative 9. When we do that, our final, final answer, after like terms have been combined in the middle, our final answer will be x to the fourth minus 13x squared plus 36. All right. What happens, though, if we have a graph? Well, if we have a graph, we just have to look for the x-intercepts because, after all, roots and solutions and x-intercepts, they're all kind of synonymous, and they're, they're all tossed around in the same fashion. So if I look at this graph... I've got some sort of odd degree polynomial. I'm going to go ahead and make the assumption that it's probably going to be an x to the third polynomial. And since my right side arrow is pointing up, if I think of what I know for n behavior, it's going to be a positive x to the third. I've got x-intercepts at negative 1. So that means an x plus 1 is going to show up. And I've got an x-intercept at positive 1, so an x minus 1 is going to show up. But right here, I'm noticing, oops, that's not what I want to write. I'm noticing that's a bounce point right here. So since that is a bounce point where our graph hits the x-axis and bounces off, that means we have to have some sort of even-numbered multiplicity. Well, I need three x's total. Here's one x-intercept over here, which means the other two roots would come from this guy right here having a multiplicity of 2. So we want this in factored form. We've got x plus 1. We knew that was going to happen. And then x minus 1 squared. And again, this x minus 1 squared came from the fact that we had a bounce point right there. If I were to count up my x's, I have 1x here. And then this x value counts as a 2 for, right? 2 for 1 deal. So I've got 1, 2, 3 x's x to the third power. Uh, also, this one said it wants it in factored form, so I'm just going to leave in that form. No need to distribute it out. <clears throat> Next one. All right, just in looking at the shape of this graph, I'm noticing both arrows, both end behaviors are doing the same thing, so it's going to be some sort of even degree. It's got too many turning points to be an x squared. My assumption is it's probably going to be an x to the fourth power. It might be an x to the 6th, x to the 8th, who knows, but it's going to be at least x to the 4th. 
the right side arrow, the end behavior on the right side is pointing up, so it's going to be a positive x to the fourth. Let's see, we've got an x-intercept at negative 2, and that's going to be a bounce point, so we have to keep track of our mul multiplicity on this one. So we have a bounce point there. We've got an x-intercept at 0 and an x-intercept at 1. So my factors is I should see an x plus 2, but I'm going to throw an even number exponent on there. So x plus 2 quantity squared. And x, well, just plain old x, so you could do x minus 0 if you wanted to. And then x minus 1. Lo and behold, that's what we've got. So our x represents our origin. x plus 2 is this bounce point right here because it was squared. Then we have the minus 1 for that point there. Again, this is asking for factored form, so no distribution needed. Thank heavens. All right, home stretch here, folks. See this one I'm noticing right arrow is pointing up, and it looks like the shape of an x cubed, a cubic polynomial. I'm going to find my x-intercepts, negative 3, 0, and 1. None of those are bounce points, so none of them have any sort of multiplicity I have to look out for. They'll all just have a, an odd number, multiplicity or multiplicity of 1. So here we've got our 1, 2, 3 x-intercepts represented by our 1, 2, 3 factors. All right, last one. Uh, let's see, this one looks like it's an x to the fourth shape. But since the right arrow is pointing down, the end behavior on the right side is negative, we're going to have a negative function. I've got a bounce point at negative 1. I've got an x-intercept where it goes through or crosses over at positive 1. And then an x-intercept where it crosses through at 2. <clears throat> this factor for the root at negative 1, so x plus 1, has to have some sort of an exponent on there in order to have an even multiplicity. So in factored form, here's what we've got. We've got x plus 1, and that's raised to the second power because we needed that multiplicity for the bounce point. x minus 1 for the green one, and x minus 2. We also knew that it had to be negative because our end behavior is pointing down. All right, last type of problem. Finding zeros using a calculator. You know me, I'm using Desmos. All hail Lord Desmos. A few things to keep in mind. A polynomial of nth degree will have at most n minus 1 turning points. So what that means is if I had x to the fourth, come on now, it could have three turning points. So if I think of a graph, there's one turning point, there's two turning points, there's three turning points. These turning points are essentially maxes and mins is what we would refer to those. If I had you know, x to the seventh power, this is going to get gross, I could have up to six turning points. So if I had x to the seventh power, I could have up to six turning points. So maybe it is, there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that might be what an x to the seventh looks like, or could look like. The next thing says that a polynomial of nth degree will have n solutions, n roots, including real and imaginary. So real and imaginary. What this means is if I have x to the third power, I'm going to have three solutions. If I have x to the fourth power, I'm going to have four solutions. If I have x to the 18th power, I'm going to have 18 solutions. Now, most of the time, solutions will manifest as x-intercepts. If they don't manifest as x-intercepts, then they're going to be imaginary. So if they show up on the graph, come on now, if they show up on the graph as x-intercepts, then they are going to be real solutions. If they don't show up as x-intercepts, they're imaginary. So here we've got our two examples, and I graphed them already using Desmos. First one is <coughs> x to the third minus 4x squared. 
we want to find all of the solutions. Well, I know based on this exponent that I should have three solutions total. So if I look at my solutions, I'm looking for x-intercepts, and I'm only seeing two x-intercepts. I'm seeing x-intercepts at 0 and at 4. But this here says I need to have three solutions. If it's x to the third power, I need three total solutions. Well, the fact that right here this is a bounce point, this kind of indicates that we've got a multiplicity of 2 for that zero. So if I were to kind of write out these solutions, it would be zero, zero again, and four. Those would be my three solutions. Typically, we don't write the same number twice. We would just say it's got a multiplicity of two. On the second one here, we have x to the third power again as our leading, our degree. So I should see three total solutions. Now, I'm only seeing one x-intercept on the graph. And that x-intercept is at 0. So I've got one answer, but I need the other two. Well, if there's no x-intercepts, if they don't hit the x-axis, then that means they're going to be imaginary solutions. So what's going to happen here is we're going to have three solutions total. We're going to have one real and two imaginary. So imaginary solutions means that there's going to be an I involved. They're going to be in the complex number set. They will not show up on the graph as x-intercepts. So we would have one real solution and two imaginary solutions. The real solution manifests as an x-intercept. The two imaginary solutions will not show up on your graph. One thing to note about imaginary solutions before I end this is they always, always, always come in pairs. So you will never have an odd number of imaginary solutions. You can have two of them, four of them, six of them, eight. You will never have an odd number. And if you think about it, that kind of makes sense because imaginary solutions come from taking the square root of a negative number. But anytime we take the square root of something, there's a plus or minus that comes into play. So that's why they always show up in sets of two. All right, that's all I've got for this video. You know the drill. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, folks, good luck, have fun, be safe, roll tide.